Hello guys, I hope you all are doing good. I am Vishali Kikan and we are discussing the electronics engineering. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the resistance of the diode. So we are going to talk about the static and the dynamic resistances of the diode. So without wasting any time, let's discuss about the resistances of the diode. So first of all, we are going to see what kind of diode we are having. We are having ideal diode or the practical diode. Ideal diodes are there in the theory only, right? So what is the difference between the ideal and the practical diode? The ideal diode in the forward bias condition, it is going to give me zero resistance. But we all know the intrinsic electric field is there. Right? I hope you remember we talked about the intrinsic electric field in the previous video. Right? So, because of the intrinsic electric field which is opposing the flow of current inside the diode, we will never be having the zero resistance to the flow of the current. Intrinsic electric field is going to provide some resistance to the flow of current. Right? So, ideally we will not be having zero resistance. Right? So, in the practical diode, it is not called a perfect conductor because if I have zero resistance, then only I call this substance as the perfect conductor. Now, practical diode is not a perfect conductor. So, we will be having non-zero resistance in the forward bias in the practical diode. Right? And what about the reverse bias? In the reverse bias, we are considering that we have infinite resistance. Ideally, the VI characteristic graph should look like this. So, this is my V right? and this is my I. Right? So, ideally, the graph should look like this. So, here, if I take it on the reverse side, in the reverse side, the current will be 0. So, it is on the V only. Right? On the y axis we will be having some current which is flowing like this right so above the knee voltage i will be having the infinite current we will be having zero resistance we all know resistance is v is equal to ir right so resistance will be equal to v upon i so now here when v upon i i is infinity so resistance is zero when i becomes infinity resistance will become zero so this is the ideal condition that we have but practically we don't have this type of characteristics we have already seen the vi characteristics in the previous video only right so there we saw that how we have the deviation from the ideal characteristics right so Ideally, we have the zero resistance in the forward direction and the infinite resistance in the reverse bias, right? So, in the reverse bias, you can see we have zero current, right? So, the infinite resistance in the reverse bias, which means it will be acting like a perfect insulator, right? But it will never be acting like a perfect insulator if it is a practical diode, right? In the reverse bias, we are not having infinite resistance in the reverse bias. So, when we don't have zero or infinite resistance, so we must be having some resistance in the forward or the reverse bias. So how do we calculate the resistance? So we are classifying the resistance as the static resistance and the dynamic resistance. So first we are going to see what is the static resistance. The static resistance is calculated when the diode is connected to a DC circuit. So this thing you should remember whenever I have a DC circuit and DC supply at the input. So, then only I will be calculating the static resistance, right? So, it is also known as the DC resistance or static resistance. Static resistance is given by DC voltage across the diode upon DC current flowing through the diode, right? And how we denote it with the help of RF. Right? So, this is how we denote the static resistance. Now, coming to the dynamic resistance, the resistance offered by the diode to the AC signal. Right? So, if instead of DC signal, if I supply the AC signal to the given diode, so it will be offering the different resistance to the AC signal and this uh, resistance is known as the dynamic resistance. So, we can calculate it with the help of slope of VI characteristic. Right? So, we all know we have the characteristic like this. So, here in the forward bias, the characteristics is like this and the reverse bias, the characteristics is like this, right? So, now here if I find out the slope, I can get to know what is the AC resistance or what is the dynamic resistance, right? It is represented by small rf and we can calculate it as slope which is equal to dv upon di, right? Or del v upon del i. For small difference, I will be using dv and if I am taking larger gap, 
so I will be taking del V. If I have large gap, I will be taking del V. If I have only small gap for which I am measuring the voltage and current, then I will be using dV upon dI. So RF would be same if I am taking dV upon dY or del V upon del I, right? So RF will be change in the voltage upon resultant change in the current. So in the terms of change, I am going to find out the dynamic resistance. So this is how it is different from the static resistance. We all know the current for a diode is non-linear and the current equation is given as I is equal to I naught exponential V upon eta Vt minus 1. Right, so this is how I will be denoting the current equation. So now I can differentiate it with respect to V. So di by dV will be equal to G, right? So hi, how I can represent the di by dV? So here we have the exponential and I0 is a constant, it will be remaining as it is. And the exponential V upon eta Vt minus 1, here we will be having a differentiation of this. I will be having I0 e raised to power V upon eta Vt upon eta Vt. Now you have to find out this differentiation on your own and you have to check it is equal to I0 e raised to power V upon eta Vt upon eta Vt or not, right? So now G is the conductance. Conductance is di upon dv, right? So I0 e raised to power v upon eta vt upon eta vt. So now this can be represented as I plus I0 upon eta vt, right? So you can take the equation of current and now you can add it to I0 and divide it by eta vt. So now that time you will be getting G only, right? So here I know R is 1 upon G, so if I take its reciprocal, I will be getting R. Eta Vt upon I plus I0 will be equal to resistance, right? When I am taking the forward bias current, I will be considering the I0 to be very small, right? So I will be neglecting it, so R will be equal to Eta Vt upon I. So I is the reverse saturation current, so I can say, you can see dynamic resistance is inversely proportional to the reverse saturation current. So this is how I have calculated the dynamic resistance as well as static resistance for the given diode. I hope you understood each and everything that I have discussed in this video. If you have any doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and also give me your feedback. Thank you so much.